Hey everyone, welcome back to Living Beyond Sunday, the podcast where we talk about the everyday Christian life. My name is Jonathan Sams and I'm back here with Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, before we get into it, we've got something pretty exciting for today. But before we do, we've got a couple of housekeeping items for those of you all listening or watching. Number one, if you're just listening, go ahead and, and hop over to our YouTube channel, Image ATL, on YouTube and subscribe because that's where we post the video form of these podcasts. And who doesn't want to watch us on YouTube? I certainly do. And so pop over to YouTube and hit subscribe and like on this video. It really helps with the algorithm. Other than that, for our podcast, uh, this is going to release uh, pretty close to the end of October, about a week before the end of October. And we're about to hit pretty much the holiday season with November and December. So during that time, both for Pastor Mike's family and his schedule and my schedule and our producer, Dylan, we're going to take our break through the holidays and come back and reevaluate content think about new ideas. Um, we'd love to hear from y'all. Send us an email at Pastor Mike at Image ATL, or you can fill out the form under this uh, video description. That is anonymous. That is anonymous. That is yeah. the anonymous option for podcast content ideas, what y'all would like to see, stuff like that. And we are going to be through going through a season of evaluation, praying, and discerning on what content we would like to go into for next year. Yeah, um, so be good. on the lookout for that. One other thing I'd say too is take this time between now and, and the end of the year when, before we look at the new year in 2025. Go back and listen to some of our content. We put a lot of work into that yeah. um, and a lot of energy into trying to create content to help you live beyond Sunday. And so take advantage of that and uh, go check it out. You can find it online. Uh, some of the older episodes are on uh, Spotify. They're on Apple Podcasts. And so take some time and go get caught up and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what God does in 2025. Yeah, if you pop over there as well, leave us a review. Uh, it really helps out um, the algorithm on that front of things. And if you hear, listen to an episode that was one of our older ones that's really good content, share it with a friend that you think it might help in their walk with Jesus. We pray that this would be a resource to help you walk with Jesus every day. And so go ahead and do that in this time being, but also send us your ideas or what you'd like to see in the future. As I said at the beginning, we've got something exciting today for our kind of uh, our last go ra- round before we take our, our short leave. And that is a, a kind of a fire round of questions for Pastor Mike of stuff that we just haven't uh, approached questions from listeners. Um, and so starting off, the day we're recording this is actually exactly two weeks from Election Day. Yeah. And so that's one of the questions that we haven't approached quite yet. We've talked a little bit adjacently, but I'd love to hear from you, Pastor Mike, uh, how do you think as Christians we should approach arguably one of the most contentious elections in my lifetime for sure, maybe in um, the history of America? Yeah, for starters, I would say that keep in mind that our hope is not in the election, but it's in Christ and that we know that in the end he wins and we can have peace in the fact that he's our savior. We're not voting on a savior. Uh, We already have one. And so um, fixing your eyes on Jesus as you walk in the election, knowing that, yes, it is very important. And I'll talk about that, that you're, you know, participate in that at the same time, knowing that um, Jesus is still on his throne. And as a Christian, you can really take heart and have hope. And this is what I love about the Christian faith is in the midst of the contention that exists in the midst of the chaos that's there and the confusion and questions um, that we know we have a hope that's anchored in something so much greater than a vote or a person or a candidate, but it's anchored in Christ. Um, but, but with that said, I would say, you know, as it comes to this election, I think part of our Christian duty is to leverage our voice and vote. We've been given a privilege, and it is a privilege to be able to vote. We're part of a democracy. That is a privilege as well. To, to live in a democratic uh, country is a, is a very important principle. There are lots of other countries around the world that do not have that privilege. And so I think it's very important that we leverage our voice. And, um, and I would say it's your Christian duty to leverage that voice uh, at the poll. And I know that can be challenging, and that is up to you to decide how you're going to leverage that. But I think it's really important to leverage that. It's easy. I know some people, um, they, I'm, I'm just not going to vote. The problem with that is, is that there's no impact. That's more for you on a personal level. Um, that, but that, that doesn't change anything in the election as opposed to taking a step and saying, hey, we have a choice. And whether or not you vote or don't vote, there will be a candidate that comes in as president. So leverage your voice and, um, and, and your, uh, your citizenship here in this country. I think that's an important piece to it. And then I would say, you know, just for some um, light principles to, to go through is, you know, what, what are your Christian values and which candidate um, allows those Christian values to thrive the most? Um, or, or in what way do you think that they could thrive the most? Which one is more in alignment in their policies and, and what things they want to see happen with your Christian values and then vote that way? Um, that's the thing I would say that's the, the best thing to be able to do. It's really all we can do. And again, remembering like, I mean, neither party is a, a Christian party and, you know, there's one hope and it's Christ. And so, you know, it just, it gets really messy and muddy. And the fact that we're in a sinful world with broken people and a broken system and all that kind of stuff, 
And yet at the same time, we're called as Christians to step into that and, uh, I believe, make our voice known and uh, choose the candidate that we're going to vote for and go from there. Do you think um, one of the things I've, I've heard other Christian influencers talk about is making an argument that Christians should not vote third party, that they should pick between the two because one of the two will win. Do you have a position on that? Do you think, you know, if, if the Christian obligation in America should be to leverage your voice and vote, which I agree with, um, do you think it's okay if people go, I, I don't like either. I'm, I, I'm going to vote for third party candidate. Yeah, because at that point, you're still making your voice heard. And, yeah. and if enough people, and here's the thing, I think if enough people that are sitting on the sidelines saying I'm not voting actually did vote for a third party, we might actually see some change one day. Yeah. So I don't think it's a bad thing to vote third party. That's that's taking advantage of your right, your freedom, and your opportunity uh, to be able to walk in that poll and be able to put something down. And I just think it's important because what will happen too also is it's not just people say I'm not voting and they don't go to the poll. They'll go and vote for everything but one you know thing, the presidency or but. And, and so, you know, I think we've got to walk in knowing uh, that, man, we're going to go in, we're going to exercise our right. And, you know, you're also not attaching yourself to the candidate. I think that's really important as well um, to be able to remember. I think we've we've the culture has really made this messy and muddy to where it's like who you vote for is who you're now attached to. Right. And everything they believe you believe. That's not true at all. That yeah. you, no, but no one person. Yeah, it's never yeah. been the case. And, and you're not going to align with one person in any regard, you know, regardless um, so I think you've, you've got to free yourself from the attachment that society tries to put on you that like who you vote for defines you and shapes you and almost is like an identity for you. That is not true whatsoever. Your identity is in Christ. You're leveraging your voice. You're picking the candidate that you think would be best to be able to run this country. Both candidates are broken. Both of them have issues, but you're going to pick between the two of which one you think aligns best with what you believe, the values that you have, and and even some of the preferences that you have as it relates to life. And but I think the the, the thing that primarily has to shape it is you know um, your convictions and, and your heart in in that. So yeah. So what I'm hearing for you is basically as Christians we should just vote whether it's you know one of the two major parties, a third party. It's just in our country the obligation we we feel like should be to leverage your voice and, and make it heard via voting for someone. Right. Yeah, not just abstaining. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Um, any other thoughts on that? Because it is two weeks away, which is kind of crazy. I feel like this election cycle has yeah, been Yeah, last thing I say is crazy. do your homework. Look yeah. at look at the policies. Know, know the policies. You're, again, you know, there's individuals that are running, but they're running on a ticket with policies. And so know the policies that they're that they're you know, that they're believing in and holding up and wanting to champion. And that's not just the office of president. It's all the other offices we're going to be voting on. Like do your homework, go in informed. And, and so you can make an informed decision to leverage your, uh, your ability and your right to vote, um, by, by being informed in the process of like, okay, here's the policies I know that they have and don't have and what they want and don't want. Those things matter. Again, this is, this is why we're voting. You're, you're voting. Yes, there is a, a person that will stand in office, but there are policies that they're running on that are very, very important that relates to your everyday life and, the, the life of everyday people in America. Yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, obviously the office of president is the one that everyone pays attention to because it's the biggest office in the land. But, like, your local offices matter a lot when it comes to how much they could actually have an impact on your life, whether it's your property taxes or right. your school district or stuff like that. So being informed and, and going to vote on those things as well matters a lot. Right, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yes, that's a big one. That's good. Um, next rapid fire question is we're about a week and a half away from Halloween. Yeah. And we've actually done a broader podcast on this. So if you're interested in a more lengthy discussion on the topic, go back and listen to it. I think it's on Spotify. It won't be on YouTube because it was a little before we started. And Apple Podcasts. And Apple Podcasts. I think it's should Christians celebrate Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But nevertheless, for our new listeners or people who didn't listen to that episode, didn't catch that one, um, What's your take on Halloween? Should yeah. we should we have candy ready for kids at our if we live in a neighborhood? Should we decorate? Is that wrong if we do? What do you think? Yeah. Man, I know it's a tricky one. There's a lot of different perspectives on this. I would say that this is a cultural moment that's a great opportunity for you to engage with your neighbors. Um, I think it's a chance to, I know for us, we like to have candy and we like to meet kids that come to the door. Um, the, the kids that are coming, they they just want candy. And yes, they're dressed up. They're dressed up so they can get candy. And so we want to interact with the people in our neighborhood, get a chance to meet new people. Uh, we want our kids to go and get candy and, and have a good time. And um, you could participate in the event without celebrating anything behind it. And I think that's something important to know that as Christians, we can redeem um, cultural elements. And I think one of the ways to um, redeem it is saying like, hey, we're going to dress up and uh, we're going to go door to door 
and uh, we're going to get candy and we're going to meet people and, and we might go with people from our church. We've done that a lot and, and uh, you know, engage with the community in that way. And so I think uh, being careful not to overthink it. While at the same time, I respect people's convictions if they say, hey, listen, um, you know, we, we don't participate in it at all. Um, we know there's undertones to it. We, there's history to it. Da, da, da. Uh, I, I respect that, you know, and I, I wouldn't argue against that necessarily. I think that both kind of positions, whether or not you choose to participate or, or choose not to, um, I think we've got to be careful not to cast judgment on one another. Um, I think there's good reasons for both. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so holding it lightly in, in that regard. But I think also knowing like, man, this is a cultural moment. You can not overthink it. And again, just because you participate. So if my son dresses up, he's going to think he's going to be like Cody Peterson or he's going to be a, you know, deer hunter or, and my daughter's going to be like a unicorn or, you know, like the, they're, they're just fun things dressing up and, and going around and getting candy and a chance for them to connect with friends and us to connect with neighbors. Um, you know, in that it's not like we're going deep dive into and, and really celebrating and orienting our lives around, you know, uh, the process of it. So I think there's ways to, to do it well. I think the decorating piece is interesting. You know, you could, again, it's what you want to make it. It's fall time. Do you want to carve a pumpkin and put it out front and put a candle in it and like, hey, we've got, you know, I I've know people argue the backside of that and it's a jack-o'-lantern and here's what it means, you know, all these kind of elements. But if you're putting a baseball in it or a football, you know, like, is there ways to redeem that or even have fun with it? You put a, you know, a weird looking face on it and, you know, whatever. Um, it's, it's an activity to do with your kids, with your family. Um, it fits the, the season as far as the fall and it's a pumpkin and you've got mums out there and whatever. I, I just think there's freedom to be able to uh, participate in it um, without going so far as to say we're celebrating it, honoring it, or believing in any of the things that are there. And, and I would just say there's a lot of other things in society that we – uh, maybe are around or participate in that if you trace them back, there there are ties to things that are unhealthy. And, and you know, one of the things we were talking about before this, I think the thing we have to understand is anything um, non-Christian, anything outside of Christ, any people outside of Christ, Ephesians 2 said it's, uh, it says it's under the rule of, of the enemy anyway. And so we do have to be guarded and be mindful of, um, you know, the things that we're choosing to participate in and, and why and how we go about those things, even what we're communicating to our kids um, and we've had conversations like that about how much we will do and what we won't do because of the undertones that are there as it relates to Halloween. And it's been able to be a chance for us to to talk to our kids about the fact. I mean, Paul says that our war is not against flesh and blood. Right. It's about the principalities of the air. Yeah, so. like there's something different in Halloween than like two things are, are very different. One, if you're like, yeah, our kids trick or treat and we're just getting candy versus, you know, where we're going to the haunted houses and we're you know, pursuing that stop the the more horror aspects of that do link back pretty heavily to the origins, right? Like the, right. there's kind of two different motives there. Well, one could maybe we'll do a future podcast on kind of Santa Claus and yeah. <laughs> some, some of that yeah. stuff, you know? Um, but all that to say, uh, when it comes to principles of that, I, what I heard as well. And if I remember right, what we had said previously about the topic is, you know, if you're a Christian, you got to respect your brothers and sisters that choose not to based off conviction and not be a stumbling block for them, but also that we think there's freedom to approach it in a kind of fun loving way, so to speak. Sure. Yeah. And be intentional with it. Be intentional with your kids. Uh, maybe have some good conversation with your kids. I do think it's a cultural moment to talk to your kids about um, the, the reality that, man, there is, um, you know, a spirit world that we acknowledge is real, that we don't choose to lean into or participate with or in, you know, um, if they're old enough, obviously. And then, you know, I think the other thing, be in touch with your neighbors. Um, you know, for some families, man, that, you know, they don't have very much family time at all, but they'll come around a pumpkin to carve it. Man, that's awesome. Like you're spending time together, you know, and some people don't interact with their neighbors and, and this is an opportunity. So just be intentional to, to leverage it and see it as an opportunity, not just an obstacle that's there in the process. And then again, don't cast judgment on whether you choose to do it or not choose to do it. Be mindful. We want to, we want to walk in love and in unity together. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. Another one for you. I mean, we're hitting the hard questions today. <laughs> So this was a, a question in from a listener, and it was um, about the topic of women in ministry. But the specific question was this, quote, I know women are not called to be pastors, but are they allowed to be preachers? For example, would they be allowed to go up um, on a Sunday to the podium or pulpit and give a sermon as long as they're not claiming to be a pastor? Uh, what, what say you on, yeah. on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a couple of things, um, and, and some of this is going to take a little bit of, of breakdown, and I appreciate the way the question is asked, and I think it's a very genuine and, and real question a lot of people have. So I'll tell you our philosophy here on how this works is that we, um, we believe that the, um, the pulpit, 
i.e. the sermon, is reserved for elders only. And so any non-elders we would not allow to come up and give a sermon and take the place of because we believe that that preaching is a role of uh, an elder. And so that's a that's a, a placeholder for an elder. So no non-elders would go up there and, and preach. And so to your point, because of the fact that the elder role is for some qualified men, and that's important, some, not all. It's not like all men can and all women can't. But some qualified men, there's plenty of men that can't. Uh, because that ro- role is for some qualified Actually, a men. majority of men can. Right, there's a majority <laughs> of men, exactly. Um, because that role is for some qualified yeah. men, then we wouldn't have at our church uh, a woman that would present the sermon. Now, there's ways to um, interact, and, and hey, if, if I'm up there and I'm preaching and uh, I bring my wife up there to talk through some things, or we bring somebody else from the community up there to talk through some things. Like interview style. Interview style, that yeah. kind of thing, that's different. Um, you know, and we have women leading in a lot of other capacities. Um, you know, the, the only role in in our church where um, women do not serve in is that specific office of elder. There's also plenty of men that don't serve in that. Again, I think that's important. Um, But outside of that, you know, there's plenty of opportunities for uh, for, for teaching and speaking. And, and, you know, it depends on how you describe a, a sermon as well. If, if we had a, a women's event, by all means, like there are women with the gift of shepherding and, and, preaching, if you will, as it relates to being able to declare God's word uh, to other women. I think that's that's totally um, a great thing. And so we want to fan the flame of that. And so if women have the gift of teaching or or preaching, we want them to do that. We just want them to do it in the in the context that we believe the Bible shapes uh, for them. So, yeah. Yeah. Easy question for you. Yeah. <laughs> Easy question. Um, last one on a more serious note, because and maybe I should have linked this one bad pre-planning on my part with the election, but one of the big issues in the election that touches, and we did a podcast on this somewhat, but we didn't talk a little bit about how Christians should approach it is the topic of Israel. Because that's such a big issue in the election, we obviously, we talked about when the attack happened on Israel on October 7th and how Christians should maybe respond to it. But because time has passed a little bit and obviously new events have come up, do you think there's a Christian obligation to always vote in the interest of the country of Israel as it stands? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, um, I mean, it's hard. A lot of it depends on kind of where you stand yeah. in, in a lot of different ways. Um, I, I do think, um, man, and we talked about this in the podcast, there is, and I'll just talk about, let me just say from a personal conviction standpoint, from a personal conviction standpoint, there is always a draw that I have to Israel because of what I've seen in in Scripture. And this is just on a personal level uh, of the reality is that that is and and will continue to be until Jesus returns um, and, and makes all things new. It is God's people, God's chosen people as a means by which that he's revealed himself to the world. He's done that through Christ. So there is a big element of that that's been offloaded. And yet at the same time, uh, man, there's just a, a personal draw that I have to Israel to say, okay, and I recognize a lot of our, our there's a lot of folks in Israel that, that need to believe in the Jesus that came through their line. Right. Um, many of them are, are, are still waiting, unfortunately, for the Messiah, and, and we believe as Christians, I mean, he has come, would you see and believe? Um, and yet at the same time, when we look back in the Old Testament, so often we see Israel waver and wonder and depart from, and yet at the same time, God still aims his love at them um, and, and reveals himself in, in multiple ways to them. So, yeah, I just I would say on a personal level, again, it's hard for me to to give a concrete argument for that other than just on a personal side. I, I do have uh, a draw toward uh, toward Israel, and um, and so I think it's worth holding that uh, intention as you walk to the polls and as you think through voting. Um, and you've got to figure out where you stand on that. You know, I think each person has to really kind of come to their resolve. I know for some, it's like, nah, you know, it's just this is about our country, not about Israel, and. You know, in some ways I could understand that because do you take into account every single other country as well? I, so there's a lot of ways it could parse out. Again, I just I can only really speak from a personal standpoint. If I'm if just where I'm at, I have a lean toward, um, you know, siding with with Israel, um, you know, because of those convictions. Yeah, I think one of the things that I think of like in our institute class here at church when we talk through the Old Testament, uh, one of the things I would argue for anyone listening to this um that's a christian thinking through this issue is to go back and read the old testament yeah and really understand what it says about uh what god has promised through the prophets for the nation of israel and there's theological arguments all over the place to argue maybe the church has replaced it but there i think there are some that 
it's really hard to make an argument that that's not for the nation when it comes to the land that they currently occupy, for right. example. Um, well, and the tensions you see them that they have right now, I mean, you can trace it all the way back. Yeah. Right. You can trace it all the way back to Ishmael. Yeah. You know, which is wild. So. Yeah. I know that's a, a, a tough question when, when we didn't give it as much time as we probably could. Right. But I'm sure you would agree with this for those listening to at least examine that there is freedom on where you stand on that issue as a Christian. But know your Bible and, and at least grapple with what it says and come to a, a coherent theological position on, on yeah, the subject. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with that being said, I appreciate your willingness to do kind of a rapid fire question and answer. Um, hopefully this has been helpful for y'all listening. And uh, we look forward to praying over this next season and evaluating our content. Like we said at the beginning, it's really encouraging for us, uh, for you to leave a review, like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave us a comment. It helps give us with some ideas. Out. Yeah. Give us some ideas. Yeah. Um, send them to us or let us know if you come to image church here in Marietta. Um, we are always open to those ideas and we are looking forward to continuing to improve the podcast for y'all. And we continue to pray before every podcast that this would be a helpful resource for y'all as y'all are walking closer with Jesus. With that being said, I hope each of y'all walk closer with Jesus and that this is a resource that is super helpful for y'all. And we look forward to talking to y'all after the new year. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. And we'll All see you on holidays. the flip side. Yep. <laughs>